Well, today we come again to the Belgic Confession, and we're in the middle of a section that talks about the work of salvation that God is accomplishing within us. And we start today with Article 22, which talks about the righteousness that is ours by faith. As we look at the work of Jesus in our lives, we're looking especially today at the practical effects of being in Christ. Confession says this, We believe that for us to acquire the true knowledge of this great mystery, the Holy Spirit kindles in our hearts a true faith that embraces Jesus Christ with all his merits and makes him its own, and no longer looks for anything apart from him. The Belgic Confession will go on in this section to emphasize that Jesus is fully sufficient. He's all we need for salvation. But Jesus is not just an intellectual problem that we're solving. Rather, he is a person who meets a need between us and God. He opens for us a pathway to heaven, to transcendence. So often in our world, we think no farther than sort of our own, the top of our own head. But uh, we need something more than ourselves. But I would argue, too, that faith is not just a way of thinking about something more than ourselves, about thinking about the transcendence. Sometimes we talk about being people of faith as if you can have a spiritual journey that has no destination. But the Christian faith does not allow for that. It's not just someone seeking something nebulous that's bigger than myself, but faith is something that embraces Jesus with all of his merits, as the confession puts it. In other words, you can't have faith without having your faith latch on to Jesus, onto the triune God. Our aim as Christians is not just to think of something beyond ourselves or commit ourselves to doing good works as a matter of giving ourselves up for others. It is to lock onto the work of Jesus because there is something in him that we find, in his work, that we find nowhere else. And that brings us to the question of, well, what is that something else? And Article 23 talks about that in some detail. We believe that our blessedness lies in the forgiveness of our sins because of Jesus Christ, and that in it our righteousness before God is contained. It goes on a little bit later to say, We are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And therefore we cling to this foundation which is forever firm, giving all glory to God, humbling ourselves and recognizing ourselves as we are, not claiming a thing for ourselves or our merits, and leaning and resting on the sole obedience of Christ crucified, which is ours when we believe in him. The confession here is really speaking about a turning point in our relationship with God, which happens when God declares us righteous rather than sinners who deserve his condemnation. Now, the theological word for this is justification. Sometimes it's given a sort of Sunday school definition. Justification is just as if I'd never sinned. Now, that's not a full definition, but it's a helpful starting point for our understanding, I think. This is something that was especially an important point in the Reformation. Uh, somebody like Martin Luther pictured here, uh, placed a big emphasis on this. Justification has two aspects. It's forgiveness for the things that we've done wrong, but it's also the credit of Jesus' righteousness to us. We can see the talk of forgiveness in some places like Psalm 103 where it talks about, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. We see the other aspect, credit of Christ's righteousness to us, in a place like 2 Corinthians 5. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that we could become the righteousness of God. And I think both of those aspects are important. It's important to know that our sins are forgiven, that the debt that we owe has been paid. But it's also important to know that the things that we could never do, the obedience that we could never give perfectly to God has also been done for us. When God looks at us, it's as if he has Jesus standing in front of us, and he sees Jesus, he sees us through the lens of Jesus. Not only does God declare us not guilty, but he looks at us and says something even more remarkable. You're righteous. And this truth should give us humility, but also confidence. Confidence because we don't have to be worried about our salvation. We don't have to worry that there's, kind of in the old picture of salvation, that there's a balance between good and evil that's being weighed on us, and we need to come out on the good side. But that also leads us, this discussion leads us into another aspect of our salvation. The fact that goodness is something that should grow in us. We're not simply just declared not guilty and then left our own, but there's another process that develops in us, a process that is called sanctification. Article 24, we believe that this true faith produced in us by the hearing of God's word and by the work of the Holy Spirit regenerates us and makes us new creatures, causing us to live a new life and freeing us from the slavery of sin. A little later, the Article 24 says, so then it is impossible for this holy faith to be unfruitful in a human being 
seeing that we speak of what Scripture calls faith working through love, which moves people to do by themselves the work that God has commanded in His Word. You know, sometimes we, in our culture we have people that picture Christianity as a sort of dry, joyless religion of duty. It's a bunch of activities that you do that, that you just have to do, but there's no fun in it. There's no joy in it. But Scripture tells us that it's actually quite different. Salvation in Jesus leads to a sense of joy in following what God requests of it. I think of Psalm 119, for example, that talks about the joy of knowing God's law, finding delight in, in the things that he instructs us. A relationship with God is like a good friendship in some ways, in which we find ourselves being interested, becoming more and more interested in what pleases the other person, what pleases God. And his spirit works in us so that as we seek to know him more and to understand his word more deeply, the good works he asks of us gradually become more and more natural in us. Think about Colossians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and so on. What that chapter is saying, what Galatians 5 is saying, is that as the Holy Spirit lives in us, we more and more find ourselves characterized by those traits that God declares are good. Justification by itself declares us good. But it's not, it isn't something that by itself leads to holiness, leads to growth in us. We also need sanctification to be the outcome of our justification. Sanctification, being made holy, the word literally means, to accomplish this. As Paul says in Romans chapter 6, we do not sin so that grace may abound. I think there's an important corrective here to the way that people often understand the Christian faith. Sometimes we hear people talk about Christianity as if it was a religion of good works, that it's our goodness that makes us Christians. But the Bible says it's just the opposite, that it's actually being in Christ that makes us good. That our, our life does not have to be one of a hamster wheel, continually trying to do something better and better. But that we can have a confidence before God, even as we learn to give up our sin, which is a process that takes a lifetime. As the confession says, we would always be in doubt, tossed back and forth without any certainty, if we, our consciences did not rest on the merit of the suffering and death of our Savior. Our lives need a resting place. We need a place where we can be humble. We can also be hopeful about the process of good and, ch and good change that God is doing in us. And in Christ, and in the work of the Holy Spirit, God has given us just that.